Uh, recording na ba? Okay, so for chapters, ano, for chapter 6 last time, no, we were able to cover the concept of solution process. No? So kung baga, pag pinag-add mo yung dalawang substances, you create a mixture. And that mixture could either be any of the three. No? It could be a solution, a colloid, o kaya uh, suspension. No? So yun lang. So yun yung alam natin last time. Okay. So in chemical systems, no, for example, sa ating body, ano alam natin? Yung ating mga molecules, they are floating around in aqueous systems, no. For example, yung kinain natin, di ba? Yung mga molecules ng ano, pagkain natin, nagganda halo-halo na sa chan natin sa liquid phase, no. Okay, so kumbaga parang may solution yung buong katawan natin, no. Okay, and we also know that there are chemical reactions happening in solutions. For example, yung body natin, let's say gluco, uh, yung ano, glucose, makoconvert into energy, glycolysis, let's say, no. Uh, ano yun? Chemical reaction yun that happens in aqueous space, no. Okay, so pag-usapan natin ngayon kung kailan nag- nangyayari yung chemical reactions and what is chemical equilibrium. Okay? So, parang ano lang to? Additional idea. Okay? So, alam lang natin last time is that yung ating ano, mga molecules, they are floating around water. No? Pero, we also know that eto mga molecules na to, when they are in aqueous media, pwede sila magbungguan. Okay? And, there, and then, mayroong chemical reaction that will happen. No? When that happens. Okay? So, pag-usapan natin, kailan nagkakaroon ng chemical reaction. Okay. What causes a reaction to take place? No? So, suppose, ah, kunwari ito. So, this is my molecule. Teka lang. I will try to, ano, to share my ano, other camera. Okay, wait lang ha. Para mas clear yung picture. Alam ko maliit yung picture ko dyan sa inyo. Okay, so let me share my camera. Okay. Wait lang ha. Ayan. Okay, so ando na sa gilid yung aking cellphone camera. Ayan, para mas kita niyo ako, di ba? <laughs> Bagong gising. <laughs> okay. Gulo-gulo yung hair ko. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, ito yung ating molecule, di ba? So, this is the molecule. For example, ito yung gusto natin ma-form na molecule. Okay. Ano yung possible reactant nito? So, kunwari, ito yung possible reactant natin. Okay. So, I have a molecule of this and a molecule of this. No? So, in order for the reactants to form the product, Ano, ano pwede mangyari? Ano, ano dapat gawin nila? Dapat magbungguan sila so that they will be connected. No? Okay? Then kapag connected na sila, they will form the product. Okay? So the concept of molecules colliding with each other to form the products, that is known as the collision theory. Okay? Babalik tayo sa ating mga models later. So, that process is called the collision theory. Okay. So, ano uling kwento ng collision theory? In order for the products to happen, uh, to exist, no? Your reactants must collide, no? So, kailan nila magbungguan. Okay. So, there are several, ano, uh, there are several uh, considerations, no? Na kailan natin malaman in order for the collision theory to be, ano, to be acknowledged in a chemical reaction. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan, pag nangyayari yung chemical reaction, kailangan may mamit silang criteria. Okay? So, ano yung criteria na yun? Okay? So, tatlo lang yan. Molecular collision, collision orientation, and the activation energy. Okay? So, let me visualize all of them using the models again. Okay? So, ay. Mukha ko lang nakalagay. <laughs> okay. So, nagbabalik tayo. So, sabi natin, this is our desired substance. Okay? So, I have a molecule here and I have the 
other atoms here, no? mga terminal atoms. Pero, ang reactant ko ay ito lang, itong dalawa lang. Okay. So, according to collision theory, in order for a reaction to happen, kailangan yung tatlong ideya na sinabi dito, yung naka bold face, kailangan mamit yan. Kailangan merong molecular collision and may proper orientation of the collision and the activation energy must be met. Okay? So, bigyan ko kayo insight ano yung pinaka-literal meaning nila. So, una, molecular collision. So, ibig sabihin nun, for the reaction to happen between these two molecules, kailangan magbungguan sila. Okay? Eh, kunwari, ito. Kunwari, ito nasa isang baso. Then, ito nasa isang baso. Will there be any collision? Kunwari, ito nasa isang baso. Ito nasa isang baso. Okay, magkahiwala yung baso na yan. Will there be molecular collision? Meron ba? Ah, so, tingin nyo, meron bang collision pag magkahiwalay sila ng container? Ang sagot ay, wala. Okay? Wala. Walang collision kasi nga magkahiwalay nga sila, eh, di ba? Ah, yan yung idea ng molecular collision. In order for them to collide, they must be on the same container. Okay? So, yun yung idea natin. Kailangan yung ating reactants nasa iisang lalagyanan. Okay? Kaya nga sa chemistry, pinaghahalo natin yung dalawang substance in order for the reaction to take place. ba? Diba? Okay. So, yun yung konsepto lang ng molecular collision. Hindi pwede magkahiwalay sila. Ha? Hindi kasi sila magbubungguan. No? Kailangan paghaluin mo sila. Paghaluin mo sila so that they can collide. Okay? So, yun yung concept nun. So, once there are collisions, then possible that a product can be formed. No? However, hindi sapat yung collision lang. Hindi sapat yung nagbubungguan lang sila, no? nagkaganong-ganong lang sila. Hindi sapat yun. Ano pa? Kailangan, there must be a proper orientation. There must be a proper collision orientation. Ano meaning nun? Kasi, kunwari, ito yung gusto kong product. Ano yan? Naka-bend yan, di ba? So, this is bent. Okay? So, if you take the angle here, that's 120 degrees. So, possible na water molecule to. Okay? So, yan. So, kunwari, ang gusto kong product ay bent. Okay? So, that means, dapat ang aking reactant, they must collide in proper angles so that mabubuo yung product ko na bent. Okay? Kasi pwede ganito yung mangyari. Naka-180 degrees siya. Naka-linear siya. Iba ito, Sa gusto ko. Di ba? So, iba ito. Di ba? Ang hirap. <laughs> so, iba yung linear na yan sa gusto kong bent. No? So, ibig sabihin, if I want this product, kailangan yung, ang, yung collision ng aking reactants must be in the correct orientation. So, hindi pwede siya mag-linear kasi hindi yan yung gusto ko eh. Gusto ko naka-bend. Okay? So, that means this molecule and this molecule must collide in proper orientation. Okay? So, yan. Kailangan mag-collide sila in proper orientation. Yun yung kwento na pangalawa. Ito rin po ba, sir, yung collision, sir, sa Coke and Mentos? Um, pwede. Mm -mm. Ang kwento naman dyan is the nucleation process. Okay. And, and this siya actually, phys and this siya actually chemical reaction, rather it is a physical uh, change na Kwentohan natin mamaya yun sa Coke. Na. Okay. So, mamaya, daanan natin siya. Okay? So, ayun, balik tayo dito. So, nakwento ko na, for reactions to happen, for chemical reaction to happen, kailangan may collision. Kailangan magbungguan sila. So, that means they must be on the same container. Otherwise, walang mangyayari. Okay? What else? The orientation must be correct. Because if I... Uh, if I reacted these two species on the wrong orientation, this will give me a wrong product. Okay, mali ito eh. Ayaw ko na ito. Gusto ko nakabend. So, hindi pwede dapat ganyan. Kailangan magbanggaan sila in this manner. What else? No? There, must be, uh, there must be enough energy for the molecules no? to, to form a new bond. No? Tawag natin doon is the activation energy. Again, activation energy, this is the measure, or ito yung amount ng energy needed for the bonds to form or for the bonds to break. No? Okay. So, kunwari, ito. Itong dalawang substances na ito. 
hindi naman pwedeng nagbungguan nan sila. Okay. Hindi naman pwedeng nagbungguan nan sila sa buo na sila ano. No, kailangan may effort tayo doon. There must be enough energy so that a bond between this atom and this atom can be formed. No? So there must be enough energy para mapagdikit ko sila. Kasi kung wala akong enough energy to join them, what will happen? Magba-bounce off lang sila. Okay, magba-bounce off lang sila. So kailangan they must collide at a proper orientation and with enough energy so that itong molecule na to pwede ko mabit dito. Okay? There must be enough energy para magdugtong sila. Yun. So pag nagdugtong na sila, we now have our desired product. Okay? So yun lang yung ating molecular model for ito lang yung visual ano approach natin dito sa topic na to. Okay? So, balik ulit tayo dito. Ayan, tapos na yung aking, ano, tapos na yung aking camera. <laughs> okay. So, alam niya na itsura ng likod ko, no? <laughs> Meron pa talagang tuwalya sa likod. Anyway, so, yun yung, ano, yun yung kwenta ng collision theory. So, in summary, according to collision theory, if you want your products to form, the molecules must collide. Pangalawa, they must be in the proper orientation. And third one is that there must be enough energy so that a bond can be formed or can be broken. Uh, broken. Broken down. <laughs> okay. So, kailangan may enough energy para ma-form yung bond. O kaya, enough energy to break the bond. Okay? Ayun yung ganap ng activation energy. Okay? So, yun. Ayan. I think, ano, orientation. So, for example, you want to react this with that, okay? Ang gusto mo, ito carbon monoxide, ito oxygen gas, no? If the orientation is wrong, kunwari itong oxygen gas, nakatapat ni oxygen, walang mangyayari. However, if the oxygen gas is pointed sa carbon, then yun, pwede mabuo yung ating product. Okay? So, yun yung idea dyan. Uh, ito yung activation energy naman. Ito yung ngayon sinabi ko sa inyo. There must be enough energy so that a bond can be formed no, or broken. Okay? So, activation energy yung uh, amount ng energy needed to do that. Okay? So, dito sa ating ano, uh, if we graph the energy curve no, ng ating reaction, okay? so pag i-graph natin yung energy changes in a chemical reaction, it looks like this no. So, it looks like this. May ganitong graph, may ganitong graph. Let me explain them. Okay? So, mamaya na natin alamin but endothermic, exothermic nakalagay dyan. So, let's describe this now. So, let's say this is the reaction coordinate. Ibig sabihin, ito yung time for the reaction to occur. And on the y-axis, we have the energy. Okay? Usually in the form of enthalpy, if you're familiar with that. Okay? So, but for now, let's call it energy na lang. Okay? So, sabi natin, this is our reactants. So, kailangan, para mabuo yung products natin, they must collide with enough energy. Okay? Yung collision with enough energy, that is called the activation energy. Okay? If we graph that, it looks like this. No? So, ito yung energy ng reactants, and we have this uh, increase no? sa slope. Okay? So, itong highest point na to, ayan, so itong highest point na to, yung distance niya from our reference point, this is called the activation energy or the EA, okay? So, ito yung energy required for the molecule to form the product na. Dito na sila mag-form ng bond o dito na rin sila mag-break ng bond, okay? So, itong, ano na yan, itong gap na to from this, ayan, from this. Up to there, we call that the activation energy. And then, after nun, ano mangyayari? Babalik na uli sa stable form yung ating uh, molecules. Uh, Magre-relax na sila. Okay? Pag nagbungguan na, uh, magre-relax na yung ating mga molecules. No? So, we now have the products. Okay? However, dalawa yung curves na pwede natin ma-generate. Okay? So, pwede yung energy ng product natin is higher than the energy of the reactant. 
And pwede rin naman that the energy of the re- the energy of the reactant is higher than the energy of the product, no? So dalawa yung resulta, dalawa yung resulting ano products na pwede magawa natin. We can have products na mas mala- mas mababa ang energy kaysa sa reactant. Pwede rin naman tayo magkaroon ng products that is higher in energy compared to the reactant, no? Okay? So if you take a thermochemistry course, no? Sa ano na yun, sa STEM, no? Okay. So if you take a uh, thermochemistry course, may com- calculations about that, pero ang idea lang is that yung products natin, minsan sila ay more stable than the reactant. Meaning non kapag more stable, mas mababa yung energy nila kaysa sa reactant. Or sometimes they are less stable than the reactant. Meaning their energy is higher than the reactant. Okay? So depending on the position of the energy of the product, we can either have exothermic and endothermic reaction. Okay? So yan. Uh, let's differentiate the two. Okay? So, alin dito ang endo, alin yung exo? Oh, obvious, ito yung endo. Ito yung exo. Thermic. So, ano ba meaning ng endo? No? Endo is a Greek prefix, no? Which gives us an idea that something is coming into the system. Okay? Uh, diba? Endocytosis, no? Ibig sabihin nun, may pumapasok sa cell. Endocytosis, no? Okay? So, pag endothermic naman, may pumapasok na energy sa reaction. Okay? Yun yung literal translation niya. Endothermic. Energy is coming into the reaction. Okay? So, yan. So, when we have an endothermic reaction, the energy of product is higher than that of the reactant. The energy difference of the two, okay? If we compare the energy of the product with the reactant, if you determine the change in the energy, okay, positive yung value nyan, okay? Positive yung energy change ng product minus the energy of the reactant, okay? So that means if our chemical reaction has a positive energy, ibig sabihin nun, endothermic yun, okay? Or you may ask, saan kaya sir galing yung energy na yun, no? Kasi nag-absorb ng energy yung ating molecule, no? That's why the energy of the product is higher than the reactant. Nag-absorb siya ng energy. San po galing yung energy na inabsorb niya? O, pwedeng galing sa iyo yun, sa environment, or galing sa apoy, okay? So, pwede ka mag-provide kasi ng energy sa ating molecules, no? By heating them, okay? So, when you heat them, okay, possible na endothermic ang maging product natin. So, magpa-provide ka ng energy para ma-push yung reaction. Okay? So, yan yung endothermic. Okay? So, in summary, endothermic reaction, what happens? This is your reactant. It has to break a, break an energy barrier called the activation energy. Okay? So, after nyo ma-break yung activation energy, ma-form na yung bond natin to form the products. Okay? If the energy of product is higher than the reactant, then we call that endothermic reaction. Mas, uh, en- uh, that means endo, may energy na papasok sa reaction. Ibig sabihin nun, mas mataas ang energy ng product compared to the reactant. If you get the energy difference of the product and the reactant, that is positive in value. Okay? Ibig sabihin, nag absorb yan ng energy. Bigyan ko kayo example nun. Okay. So, bigyan ko kayo example. Bumili ko sa akong air cooler. Kasi, yung air, yung frame ng aircon, di ko pa napapaayos. <laughs> Kaya, wala pa akong mabiling aircon. No? Uh, mas mahal kasi yung paggawa ng frame kaysa sa aircon. Eh. So, air cooler na lang muna. No? Okay. Saka na, pag nanalo na tayo sa ano, loto, <laughs> yung aircon. Okay. So, anyway, bumili ako ng air cooler. Tapos, meron niyang ice pack, no? Yung para siyang bottle na may powder sa loob at lalagyan mo yun ng tubig. So, yun, pumunta ako sa, ano, sa kusina, nilagyan ko siya ng tubig. Tapos, mamaya-maya, lumamig yung ice pack, yung pl- plastic container na yun. Okay? Lumamig siya. Ibig sabihin nun, endothermic reaction yun. Okay? Kasi, in order for the reaction to occur, no? Para magkaroon ng reaction to occur, you need energy 
to uh, kailangan mo mag-provide ng energy sa system mo. Okay? So that means yung mga molecules inside the ice pack inabsorb niya yung energy ko. Okay? So yun, as a result pag kinuha niya yung energy ko lumalamig. Okay? So yun, that's an example of endothermic reaction. Kapag nilagyan mo siya ng tubig, biglang lumalamig. Yun, endothermic reaction yun. Okay? So yung energy mo napupunta sa uh, sa system, sa reaction. Okay? Ano pa example nun? Uh, timpla kayo ng tubig na may asin. No. Ako ginagawa ko yung panagagargle na no. nawalan na ako ng, ano, ng listerin na. No. Ano, naubusan ako kasi alam mo naman, pag nasa bahay, agawan minsan. <laughs> okay. So, yan. Pag naubusan ako ng ano, listerin or gargle, ginagawa ko, tubig na may asin. Hawakan nyo yung baso ng maigi. Kailangan sensitive yung kamay nyo eh. So, hawakan nyo yung baso ng maigi. Lagay kayo ng asin. Ano mafe-feel mo? Mamaya-mayan, ma feel mo, lumalamig yung solution. Totoo ba yun? Yes, totoo yun. O, try nyo mamaya. Okay. So, yun. Gamitin yung baso is yung, yung glass o kaya better yung bakal. Yung stainless. No? Okay. So, lagay mo yung asin doon sa tubig. Haluin mo. Mafe-feel mo mamaya maya lumalamig sa gilid. No? Hindi naman malamig to the point na may mag -yellow. Basta mafe-feel mo lang medyo mas malamig siya compared sa walang asin. Okay. So, ang tawag doon ay mga endothermic processes or endothermic reactions. They absorb energy from you, the surroundings. No? Kukuha, kukunan ka nila ng energy para mangyari yung chemical reaction. As a result, pag inawa ka mo yun, malamig. Okay? So, yun yung endothermic reaction. Okay? Apunta naman tayo sa exothermic. Ang ganap naman sa exothermic is that the energy of the product is less than the energy of the reactant. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nun, mas stable to. Kasi according to physics, the lower the energy, the more stable it is. No? Okay? So, ano yun? Pwede due to potential energy yun. Diba? We know potential energy in mechanical objects, the higher the height, no? <laughs> the higher the altitude, the higher the potential energy. Pag nilagay mo yun sa sahig, zero yung energy niya. Okay? O, ganun din dito sa chemical reaction. Kapag mas mababa yung energy ng product kaysa sa reactant, that means this is more stable. Okay? So, ano yung epekto nun? If you differentiate no, the energy of the product and the reactant, ito yung energy gap natin. And the energy difference is negative in value. Kasi negative minus the base, no? Negative value yung mabibigay nun sa atin. Pag pinag-subtract mo ito, pati ito. Okay? Oh, compare that with the positive value here, no? Ito, this minus this is positive. Ito naman, this minus this is negative. Okay? So, negative yan. In value. Okay. So, ano yung ano, ano, physical significance nito? Ito yung mga bagay na kapag hinawakan mo, umiinit. No? Ito yung mga, kunwari, pinaghalo mo sila, umiinit sila. Ano example nun? Ito bilang tagalinis ng CR sa bahay, which is ginawa ko bago ako magklase. Okay. So, pag naglilinis ako ng bahay, gagawa ako ng ano, liquid sosa solution. No? Ano lang yan, sodium hydroxide, pati tubig. Pag pinaghalo mo yung dalawang yun, ang init, sobra. Okay. Lagay, nilalagay ko yun sa tabo, tapos may tubig doon, tapos lalagyan ko ng sodium hydroxide pellets. No? Mga ano yun, parang crystal. No? Lalagay ko sodium hydroxide, tapos mamaya-maya, umiinit na yung solution. Okay? So that means energy is released from the system. Okay. So, yun, kasi ang energy ng product is lesser than it was before. Okay? So, may sobrang energy siya. So, para ma-release ma niya yung sobrang energy, in the form of heat yun. No? Bibigay niya sa yun as mainit. No? Okay? Kaya pag hinamakan mo yun, mainit yan. Okay? So, yun yung types ng uh, energy na magagawa natin in a chemical reaction. Endothermic and exothermic reaction. Endo meaning may energy na papasok sa system that 
me that means the product is less stable than the reactant. Ibig sabihin, the products will have higher energy than the reactant. Kasi nga, nagpasok ka ng energy sa system. Kaya tumaas lalo yung energy niya. For exothermic, exo, oh, K-pop group yan, no? Oh, ex pag sinabing exo, palabas, no? Okay? Palabas yung energy. So, meaning non, the energy of the product is lesser than the reactant, no? So, that is achieved by releasing the excess energy in the form of heat, no? Primarily heat, okay? So, for example, non, no, muriatic acid, pati tubig, no? Pag maglilinis ka ng banyo ulit, no? Kasi yun talaga ginagawa ko dito sa bahay. Diba? Teacher nyo, naglilinis ng, ano, <laughs> ng bahay. No? Ganun talaga, pag bunso. <laughs> okay. So, yun. Pag ano, maglilinis ka ng bahay, patakan mo ng konting HCl, ng muriatic yung tubig, iinit yun. Okay. Ito, ito yung dahilan nun. No? Mas stable yung products na form kaysa sa reactants kasi. Okay? So, yun lang. So, again, pag mas mataas yung product kaysa sa reactant, endothermic reaction yon. Pag mas mababa yung product kaysa sa reactant, that's exothermic. Okay? The difference for endo is positive and the difference of energy for exothermic is negative. No? Okay? So, take note of that. Okay? So, yan. So, ngayon, no, okay, alam na natin ngayon how reaction takes place, no? Ah, ano uli yung tatlong ganap para mangyaring chemical reaction? Una, there must be collision. So, that means your reacting species must be in the same container. Kasi kung wala sila sa same container, wala, walang mangyayari, okay? So, kapag nagsama na sila, there will be collisions. Pangalawa, there must be proper orientation. So that your desired product will be formed na. Kasi kapag mali yung orientation nila, hindi ma-form yung products. Ito yan, yung example natin. So kapag nag, pag nagbungguan sila in 180 degrees, hindi mabubuo yung product natin. Eh, gusto ko naka 120 degrees eh, para mabuo yung product. Okay? So there must be proper orientation no? para mangyari yung chemical reaction. And other than that, there must be enough energy to surpass the energy barrier called the activation energy. So, ito yung humps, no? Imagine nyo sa sakyan, no? Kapag may humps, aakit ka muna, then suddenly magre-relax na, no? Yung, yung sa sakyan. So, ito yung hump, no? Ayan. Okay? So, literal siya na humps. Okay? Then, the energy of activation is the energy barrier, okay? This is the equivalent energy in order to create or break bonds, no? So, yan. Ngayon naman, let's talk about the rates of chemical reaction. How do we uh, determine if a reaction will happen fast? Oh, bakit siya mabagal? Bakit siya mabilis, no? Uh, kuha tayong ilang example. Pag nag, ano kayo, pag nagsaing ngayon, Pag tag-init, compare mo yun sa taglamig, no? Kunwari, ano, mga January, February. Tapos i-compare mo yung ngayon yun. Yung kanin natin, mas mabilis mapanis ngayon kaysa sa nakaraang buwan, nung taglamig. Di ba kaya nagtataka bakit, no? Bakit nga ba? Mat mas mabilis mapanis yung kanin ngayon kaysa dati, no? So, it has something to do with the rates of chemical reaction. So, Alamin natin, what are the factors that contribute to that, okay? And explain natin bakit yung kanin or any ulam, no? Bakit ang bilis nila mapanis kapag tag-init kaysa sa taglamig, no? Explain natin yan. At bakit sila nilalagay sa ref, okay? So, yan. So, alamin natin paano nagkakaroon, uh, paano napapabilis yung chemical reactions, no? So, in... Uh, changing the speed of chemical reactions, there are several factors to consider. Number one, surface area. Ikalawa, concentration of the species or the concentration of the reactants. Ikatlo, temperature. And last one is the presence of the catalyst. Okay? So, explain natin yan. Okay, surface area. When you say surface area, okay, 
So the bigger the surface area, the more exposed siya sa ano, sa ibang chemicals. Ano, the more na mangyayari yung chemical reaction, okay? So let's compare yung ano, uh, ulam na tinakpan compared to ulam na nakabukas sa atmosphere. Hindi siya tinakpan. Of the two, sino yung mas mabilis mapapanis? Edi yung exposed sa hangin, okay? Ang, kwent, ang sagot doon kasi is the surface area, okay? So, if your molecules are exposed to other molecules, no? mas exposed siya to other molecules, then, ayun, mas mabilis mangyayari yung chemical reaction, okay? So, ayun, yun yung ganap ng surface area. So, I think hindi nila, eto. Ayan. Okay, so, yun lang isang example. Ikalawa, Concentration of reactants, no? Uh, for example, uh, let's have, uh, pagkain tayo, usapang pagkain, ha? Uh, kunwari, meron tayong ulam. May isang ulam na hindi nalawayan at may isang ulam na nalawayan, no? Gumamit siya ng spoon, tas nilagay niya doon, tas tinabi. So, ano mangyayari? Sino mas mabilis doon mapapanis? Yung walang presence ng laway or yung may laway. Okay? Ang sagot doon is yung may laway. Okay? Because, yung ating laway, it contains molecules, no? Okay? So, it contains molecules that reacts with the food, no? Okay? So, ibig sabihin on the presence of molecules or the more molecules that will react to your food, no? The more na mas mabilis yung chemical reaction. Okay? So, kaya ang ginagawa natin when we are storing food, as much as possible, gumamit ng serving spoon, okay? So that yung mga chemicals from our mouth, hindi siya mapupunta sa food, no? Okay? So hindi siya mapupunta sa food. Para hindi siya mabilis mapanis, okay? O temperature, o usapang pagkain uli. Para mas makarelate tayo, kasi pag puro chemistry words lang, parang, ah, okay. Pero kapag usapang bahay, nakakarelate tayo, di ba? <laughs> okay? So yan. So, ito, kwento natin sa surface area. Pag expose yung food sa outside environment, mas mabilis siya masira. Okay? So, mas, maram, mas malaki yung surface area niya that will react to other molecules present in the air. Okay? So, when you say concentration of reactants naman, okay? So, kunwari, the more uh, reactants that will react to your molecules is present in the system, then the more or the faster the chemical reaction will be. Okay? Kaya ang ating tip dito, kapag tayo ay nasa bahay, kapag kumakain tayo, gumamit ng serving spoon so that we will minimize the concentration of the reactants in the food products. No? Para hindi sila mabilis mapanis. Next one, temperature. Oh, ito, hey. ito yung kwento ko kanina. Bakit mas mabilis um, masira yung food products kapag mainit kaysa sa taglamig? No? Kasi ganito, um, when we increase the temperature, no, our molecules become faster no mas bumibilis yung molecules natin okay or remember niyo yung ano kinetic molecular theory sa chapter 5 okay sabi ko doon kapag mainit yung temperature uh, yung molecules natin mas magalaw okay and since mas magalaw yung molecules natin there will be more chances for collision okay and hindi lang collision mas maraming energy din okay so ibig sabihin pwedeng may enough collision and at the same time may enough energy to break the activation energy okay so ibig sabihin nun, at higher temperature so yan mas mabilis mangyayari yung chemical reaction okay but this is not always na and dito yung always na case pero yun yung general idea kapag mainit generally mas bumibilis yung chemical reaction okay so yan and then last one, presence of catalyst. Oh, ito, it has something to do with our laway then. No? Our laway contains enzyme called the beta amylase. Okay? So the amylase is an enzyme which breaks down the sugars no? in our food. No? Okay? So yung beta amylase, that is just one of the many components in our saliva that breaks down the food products. Kaya sila nasisira. No? Okay? So, and the presence of beta uh, beta amylase in our saliva no that serves as catalyst no siya yung mas lalong nagpapabilis sa pag-breakdown ng sugar molecules sa ating food no okay 
So without beta amylase, siguro matagal tayo bago matunawan. Okay. Pero with the help of those catalysts, mas mabilis na tutunaw yung food. No? Mas mabilis sila na da-digest. Okay. So, yun. so basically, sinamarize ko yung concept dito in something that is relatable, no? yung pagkain. Kasi mamaya after this class, kakain din tayo. No? Okay, so alam nyo na mga gagawin nyo sa food nyo. So ngayon, let's go on some chemical examples naman. Uh, chemistry examples. Okay. So yan. So ito yung mga chemistry examples natin. Okay, so suppose you have this block of molecule. Okay, the smaller it is, the larger the surface area. Yun yung idea sa chemi chemistry naman. Oh, for example, ito solid to. Pag pinowder mo yan, mas malaki yung surface area niya. Okay? So, yan. So, since mas malaki yung surface area ng smaller objects, then, ano mangyayari? Then, it may react faster, no? We, upon the contact with other reactants, no? Okay? So, yan. So, big, ano example na to? Bigyan ko kayo example. Ito, physical change lang to, ha? Ako nari, isang bloke ng asukal. And powdered sugar. Sino mas mabilis matunaw? Hindi yung powdered sugar. Kaysa sa isang bloke ng asukal. Ganun din sa gamot. Oh, you have a tablet of medicine. Pag dinurog mo yun, powder yun. Sino sa dalawa yung mas mabilis matunaw? Hindi yung powder, di ba? Okay. So, yun lang yung idea dito. No? Kasi when our, our objects become much smaller naman, lumalaki yung surface area niya. So, the smaller object, the higher the surface area, therefore, the faster the process change, uh, the change will be, okay? So, yun lang yung ganap dyan. Okay, so this is one example. You have here your iron powder and your iron metal. If you react the two with acid, uh, ito, medyo visible sa atin that on the left side, the powder reacts faster than the solid metal. Bakit sabi nga natin, kapag naka-powder form, mas malaki surface area kasi maliit siya. Okay. So, the higher the surface area, the more chances for it to be exposed in the acid, no? forming the products. Ko. Okay. So, compare that with the solid lang. Okay. So, yan. So, yan yung mga chemistry examples. Okay. Pero kung nasundan nyo naman siya with our examples sa pagkain, same concept lang din, na? So, yun naman, concentration nga. Sabi natin, the more species, no, the more reacting species present in your system, that means the faster the reaction will be. Okay? For example, in this process, this is, uh, this is a phenomenon called the uh, acid rain. Okay? So, if we have a marble, a statue marble, okay? So, ang statue kasi gawa sila sa marble, which is carbonates, no? Okay, in the presence of acid rain, mas mabilis masira ito. Pero kung walang acid rain, hindi ito masisira agad. Okay? So that means the presence of acids will make the reaction go faster. Okay? Mas mabilis siya masisira. Okay? Ganun din sa, ano, sa mga bakal natin sa paligid. No? Okay, sa yero, sa bintana. No? Ba't sila mabilis kinakalawang? Kasi nga, in the water, no? in acid rain, no? Mas maraming acids doon. Okay. And that acids react with the metals and carbonates. No? Kaya mas mabilis masira yung mga materials. Okay. So, yun yung mga chemistry examples natin. Oh, about temperature. A common example dyan is the yung pagkain nga. Okay. So, ba't sila nilalagay sa ref? No. Uh, Pag nilagay sila sa ref, bumababa yung temperature, bumababa yung kinetic energy ng molecules. Therefore, there will be lower uh, collisions okay, and lower energy. So, if mababa yung energy, mas mababa yung collision, hindi sila magpo-proceed to form the product. No? That's why yung ating food nilalagay sa freezer o kaya sa chiller sa baba. No? So, ganun. Para hindi sila mabilis masira. Okay. Although there are other chemical reaction, uh, although ha, there are other chemical reaction that will be faster at colder temperature, okay? So, madi discuss na natin yan later on. But that is uncommon. 
Okay, ang common kasi mga pagkain, kaya ito yung general example natin. Okay? So, I will expound more on the contradiction dito. Okay? So, kwentohan natin yan later. Okay. So, punta tayo sa catalyst. Ano ba nangyayari? No? For example, yung laway natin, it contains amylase. No? If you remove the amylase in your saliva, yung food, hindi agad yan masisira. No? Uh, hindi agad-agad. No? Okay? Pero in the presence of amylase, mas mabilis yan masisira. Okay. Ano ba yung purpose ng catalyst? No? Catalyst speeds up the chemical reaction speed. No? Uh, Paulit-ulit yung speed. May ibig sabihin lang nun, yung chemical reaction mas lalong napapabilis in the presence of catalyst. Bakit? No? Kasi ang ginagawa ng ano, catalyst is that they change the activation energy. Okay? They alter the activation energy. Okay? So, as a result, pag binago niya yung activation energy, for example, ito yung before, in the presence of catalyst, it will be much lower. Okay? So, since mas mababa na yung activation energy, mas madali na makapunta sa product. Okay? So, mas madali na makapunta doon. Okay? So, imagine nyo, itong taas na to is Mount Mayon, tapos ito is yung humps lang sa kalsada. Uh, saan mas madali makapunta to the other side? Yung hump sa kalsada or umakit ka ng Mount Mayon? Di syempre yung humps, no? Okay? So, mas madali makapunta to the product side kapag mas maliit yung humps natin. Okay? So, that means the lower the activation energy, the faster the reaction will be. Yun yung effect ng catalyst sa ating chemical systems. They lower the activation energy. So, yan. so, ano yung mga common examples na ito? Okay. So, common example will be this one. Okay. So, kunwari may sasakyan kayo. Uh, ano ginagawa doon? In the hull, uh, sa ilalim ng sasakyan, sa hull niya. Okay. May makikita kayong box doon. Uh, hindi siya TB+. <laughs> may box doon before the exhaust tube sa likod. Okay. So, kung familiar kayo, pag nakita nyo na minamekaniko yung sasakyan nyo, may makita kayong small na box dun eh. Then, tambot sya na. Okay. That small box contains what's called the catalytic converter. Okay. Okay. So, it contains catalytic converter. Okay. So, what's the, what's the use of catalytic converter? Okay. Ganito ginagawa niya. Uh, in the catalytic converter, we have many metal catalysts such as nickel, iron, and platinum. Okay? So, these are the metal catalysts found in the catalytic converter. So, ano ginagawa nila? Kinoconvert nila yung molecules. They, uh, they reduce the molecules. No? Okay? So, nagkakaroon doon ito ng redox reaction. So, bakit? No? Kasi, if we do not have any catalytic converter, the exhaust will be much dangerous gases no? such as carbon monoxide. Yung carbon monoxide, uh, maraming napatay ito. No? Marami nang napatay yan. No? Anari, sa sasakyan, pinaandar mo yung sasakyan, tapos sinarado mo yung bintana. Pwede kang ma-carbon monoxide poisoning eh. Okay. Kunari, may sunog din. No? Yung pag nasunog yung kahoy, if that's incomplete reaction, then, pwede ka mamatay din due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay. So, to lessen the, ano, to lessen the harm, no, to lessen the chances na mamatay tayo due to carbon monoxide poisoning, we allow this molecule to pass through the catalytic converter. What happens here is that yung carbon monoxide natin, nare-reduce siya to carbon dioxide. Okay. So, yan. So, since carbon dioxide na siya, edi, ano na siya? Although delikado pa rin, yes, pero less toxic, no, compared to carbon monoxide. Ang carbon monoxide kasi, onting amounts lang, hihimatayin ka na. Okay. Yung carbon dioxide, matagal-tagal pa, bago ka himatayin. Okay. So, ibig sabihin yan, less toxic na yung gas natin. Okay. So, other gases that are passed through the catalytic converter are NOx, no? nitrous oxide gases. It could be NO, NO2. No? So, ipapass through siya dito to produce nitrogen gas, which is a safer gas. Okay? 
Bakit? No? Kasi ang nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen dioxide, no? these are gases that are primary source of uh, acid rain. Okay? So, yun. Kapag na-expose sila sa hangin, acid rain yun. No? Itong mga NOx natin, NO2 or NO, when it reacts with water in the atmosphere sa clouds, no? maging nitric acid yun, which is an acid rain. No? Okay. So, to lessen the chances of forming acid rain, we pass through this molecule through the catalytic converter. So, it will be reduced to N2. Okay? So, itong N2 nitrogen gas, this is safe. No? So, safe yan. And it comprises 78% of the air. No? So, safe talaga to. Okay? I'm not sure with this HC na to. I don't know if putol tong picture na to. Okay. So anyway, basta ganun yung ginagawa lang sa catalytic converter. No? So sa ilalim ng sasakyan, yung deadly gases, they are converted into less deadly gas. No? Safer gases. No? So yun yung meron doon. Okay. So that's the catalytic converter. Uh, may students ako. No? Nung nagtuturo ako sa senior high school dati sa PUP. No? Uh, di... Sa ngayon, hindi na ako nagtuturo ng senior high eh. Uh, college na lang. No? So, noong ano, nagtuturo ako ng senior high, we actually did some research about catalyst. No? Um, instead of using metals, we used biomaterials. No? So, pinalitan namin tong nickel, iron, platinum. We changed that with activated charcoal from bio materials na no? waste bioproducts na no? for example mga damo mga ano retaso ng kahoy so kinonvert namin sila into activated charcoal then nilagay namin sila sa ganito so far effective okay so effective pero ano uh, hindi pa rin good research yon kasi limited time lang kami noon eh it requires more study pa okay pero ayun so effective naman siya pero it still needs to be ano, verified okay? and validated yung result dapat. Okay? So, hindi pa namin siya na follow up kasi wala namang fund. Na. Okay? So, ganun ginagawa namin dito. Okay? So, pwede namin palitan nyo to ng other molecules such as activated carbon no? to speed up the conversion then of harmful gases to safer gases. Okay? So, yan. So, in the body... Ang tawag natin sa catalyst ay enzymes. No? Example of that will be the amylase. No? Yun nasa laway. Without the presence of the amylase, okay? So, without the presence of the amylase, hindi agad matutunaw yung food natin. Okay? So, hindi siya agad convert into simpler products. Okay? So, ayan. So, ibig sabihin, malapit na tayo matapos for our session today. No? Hindi ko ito isasagad no? para naman makapagpahinga din kayo. I know na ang dami nyo rin ginawa earlier today. No? Okay. So, ako rin. <laughs> Kaya, pahinga rin muna tayo. No? Pero malapit na tayo matapos, let me go through the introduction for the discussion next meeting. So, hopefully clear tayo on how chemical reactions occur and what are the factors that could speed up the chemical reactions no so ano ulo yung mga ano 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 yung mga factors that causes the reaction to take place collision pangalawa orientation and then ikatlo activation energy okay so you must have enough energy and proper orientation for your molecules to collide effectively no so when they collide uh, enough with enough energy and proper orientation mabubuo yung product natin Otherwise, hindi siya mabubuo. Okay? And there are also factors that could speed up the rate of chemical reaction. So, it could be the concentration of reacting species. It could be temperature. It could be the presence of the catalyst. And what else? The surface area. Okay? So, those four factors makes the chemical reaction uh, faster or slower. Okay? So, pag, ano, pag surface area... The more fine your molecule is, no? Ibig sabihin, the smaller it is, no? the higher its surface area, that means the more uh, sites for reaction no? ang meron sa powder na yan. 
Okay. So the more sites for chemical reaction to occur, ibig sabihin, the faster the speed of reaction. Okay. Uh, pag concentration naman, of course, obvious yun. Kapag mas marami kang reactants, mas mabilis mapuform yung product. No? Kasi ang dami mong, ano, eh, dami mong supply eh. Okay. So yun. So, parang marami kang supply ng reactant, edi mas madali makagawa ng product. Kasi kung wala kang reactants, wala kang mabubuong product. Okay. So that's the concept of the concentration of the reactants. No? Ano pa? Temperature. So imagine that yun sa food. No? But natin sila nilalagay sa ref in order to lower the collision, uh, so to lower the energy of the molecules. Therefore, there will be less collision and lower energy no? than the activation energy. So as a result, hindi ma-form yung products. Okay? So, yeah. And then last one, we have the catalyst. No? So, in the presence of catalyst, the activation energy becomes much lower. So, mas bumababa yung ano, activation energy. As a, as a result, mas mabilis na perform yung products. Okay? So, biological and uh, catalysts are called enzymes. No? Yeah. So, these are proteins. Uh, okay? So, these are proteins that bind to specific molecules in our body. That speeds up the rate of chemical reaction. Okay. For example, in glycolysis, there are 10 enzymes involved there. If I'm not mistaken, 10 or 9 enzymes ang kailangan for that reaction to happen. Okay? So, yun. So, ito na yung pinaka-summary. Ayan. So, ito na yung pinaka-summary ng ating kwenanta. Okay. So, ayan. Ayan. Okay, so now let's proceed with the next one, reversible reaction. So dito na tayo malapit mag-end, no? Okay, so hindi ko na to tatapusin para may ma-discuss tayo next meeting, no? Chill lang naman tayo, eh. Okay, so what are reversible reactions, no? Ano yung reversible reaction? From the word itself, reverse, no? So ibig sabihin nun, kung sasakyan may reverse, yung reactions meron din. So, di ba, we usually think of chemical reaction as forward reactions only. You have your reactant, lahat sila convert into product. Di ba, ganun yung ano, common knowledge natin sa reaction. You have the reactants, they are converted into products. Lahat sila napupunta sa products. But in reality, there are more reversible reactions than forward reactions alone. Mas marami nito kaysa dito. So that means hindi natin to pwede skip Okay? So ito, mas onti to kaysa dito. Okay? So let's talk about this no? para mas maintindihan natin. So the word itself is reversible. Ibig sabihin nun, kung yung reactant natin napupunta sa product, there is also a chance that our products may return to the reactant. So in chemical equations, we write that with a symbol, double-headed arrow. No? With a double-headed arrow symbol. So yan, double-headed arrow symbol. It tells us that the reaction is reversible. Sabihin nun, may reaction going forward, but there are also reactions going to the left, to the reactant, no? Okay? So, parang hirap isipin, no? Pero yes, marami tayong ganyan sa ating katawan. Okay? There are lots of reversible reactions in our body. No? And biochemistry is heavily reliant on this one, no? So, for example, marami tayong, ano, marami tayong ganitong product molecules, Ano effect non sa body? Pwedeng effect non magutom tayo or pwede effect non mas maging bugnutin tayo. Okay? But over time, pwede ito bumalik dito. So as a result, hindi na tayo bugnutin. No? So sa clinical psych, no, may malalaman kayo mga ganito na reactions sa body. Okay? So reversible yon Kaya minsan good mood tayo, minsan bad mood. No? It has something to do with the chemicals in the body. Eh. So, yeah. depending on where the reaction is going, 
may corresponding uh, body response for that. Okay. So, yun yung usapang ano, biochem and clinical chem. No? Although I'm not an expert in that field, no? so I will let your professors to discuss that. But that's the idea. No? There are reversible reactions happening in the body. No? Not only in the body, around us, marami. Okay? So, ayan. So, ayan, conveniently, reversible reactions are indicated by double-headed arrow. One is pointing to the right, the other is pointing to the left. Ibig sabihin, two-way yung reaction natin. Okay? So, what will happen? No? So, if we graph the reaction, ano, the reaction coordinate with the concentration of the species, no? So, if we graph the reaction coordinate with the species, no? oh, kunwari ito, you have this amount of this molecule and this amount of that molecule, okay? So, that is actually in equilibrium. Let me write the equation. Okay. So, that is actually in equilibrium. So, if you have a presence of this, what will happen is that some of this are being converted to this. No? So, as a result, bababa ito. Ito, bababa yung concentration niya. And ito naman, dadami. But look, no? kung ito ay forward reaction, dapat mag-zero ito. Kung forward reaction to dapat mag-zero ito. Dere-derecho yung baba niya. But not, that's not the case. We have an equilibrium reaction. So, that means... Ito pupunta doon, ito pupunta dito. Okay? So, yan. If we graph the concentration with respect to time, ganito yung itsura nun. Yung N2O4, bababa onte. Okay? Yung NO2, tataas. And then suddenly, there will be a time wherein stagnant na yung kanilang concentration. Stagnant na yung concentration nila. We call that state the equilibrium state na. An equilibrium state is described when wala nang pagbabago sa concentration ng ating species. Wala ka nang nafoform na additional products. Wala ka nang nafoform na additional reactants. Basically, the rate of reaction of the forward and the reverse reaction are equal. Okay? So, that is when an equilibrium is said to be achieved. No? Okay. So, again, ano sabi natin? Kapag equilibrium, na-achieve yung equilibrium, what will happen? yung forward and reverse reactions are equal. So, kung green off mo yung concentration, makikita mo yun as flat na. Hindi na sila magbabago yung concentration na ito. Kasi kunwari, madagdagan to ng 5, 5 molar. Ito, madagdagan din ng 5 molar. No? Kasi equal na yung forward and reverse reaction. Eh. Kung gano'ng kadami na punta sa right side, gano'n din karami pupunta sa left. So, may balance na. We call that the equilibrium, okay? So, yan yung idea lang. Okay? So, yan. So, alam ko meron pa tayong pang visualize dyan. Okay? So, let me find. Okay? Chemical. So, let me show you an example wherein a chemical equilibrium can be achieved. No? So, may kita natin that they, that they will establish balance after a certain time. No? Medyo naglo-load lang yung website. No? Medyo matagal. Wait lang, ha? But hopefully, gets yung idea. No? Pag sinabi nating equilibrium, the forward and the reverse reactions are equal. So, kung madagdagan ng 5 molar itong kabila, madadagdagan din ng 5 molar yung kabila. Okay? So, equal na yung changes. Medyo loading pa yung ating simulator. So, this is from fetcolorado.edu. Okay? Ito yung ginagamit ko talaga for, ano, for uh, simulations. 
Teka lang ha. Wait lang. Okay, so ayan. Ba't hindi full screen dito? Oh, dito na lang. Lilipat ako ng share screen, ha? Lipat ko dito sa main monitor ko. Ang laki ng mukha ko, ba? Diba? <laughs> ayan, lipat tayo sa main monitor. Okay. So, ayan. So, ayan. So, may kita natin that we have molecules on the reactant. Okay? And wala tayo on the product. May kita mo, ayan, no? If you provide enough energy, some of the reactants will be converted to the products. No? Okay. So, dagdagan natin yan ng init. Okay. So, we are providing the reactants more energy. So, when they have more enough energy, they will now pass through the energy barrier and products will be formed. No? Uh, initin pa natin. Init. Ayan. Kaya yung pagkain niluluto kasi ganito din yung concept dun. Okay? However, no, may na-notice kayo. Okay, may, di ba dalawa to kanina? Tapos ngayon, bumalik na siya dito sa left. No? Okay. Tapos ngayon, no, dalawa na naman siya. Okay, o tatlo na ngayon. Tapos mamaya may babalik na naman dito. Ngayon, apat na siya. Okay. So, mapapansin nyo, there is a dynamic equilibrium. No? So, sometimes, yung molecules dito, pwede bumalik dito. And yung molecules dito, pwede pumunta doon. Okay. So, that is called the dynamic equilibrium. Okay. O, dagdagan natin yung molecules sa B. Let's say, 15-15 sila. Okay. So, yan. So, let's allow the reaction to happen. Okay. Antasan lang natin temperature. Mapapansin nyo that some molecules here go back to here. And some molecules here go to there. No? Ayan, oh. ayan. Oh, kanina red siya. Ngayon, blue na siya. Oh, ito din. Oh. Ayan. Oh. Okay. So, ayan, ayan, ayan. O, oh, diba? Nandito na siya ulit. So, mamaya, ayan, 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 pupunta dun. Okay. So, ito yung nangyayari sa chemical systems natin. <laughs> okay. Ayan. Ano lang to? Visualization lang to. But in reality, this occurs talaga. No? So, this is what happens to our chemical system when they are at equilibrium. No? So, equal yung rate of reaction, yung forward and reverse reactions. I'm not really sure what's the purpose of this timer here now, okay? But yun lang yung idea, okay? Oh, hopefully, nagets natin, no? So, yun lang yung konsepto ng equilibrium, okay? Sometimes papunta sa left, sometimes papunta sa right, but at equal proportions, no? So, yun yung chemical equilibrium, okay? And when we have equilibrium, Okay, so when we have equilibrium systems, they are usually described mathematically by equilibrium constants. No? So an equilibrium constant is a mathematical expression which has a numerical value which relates the relationship of the concentration of the products with the reactants. No? Ibig sabihin, inaalam lang niya yung ratio ng products and the reactants. So, depending on the value of K, we can tell if the reaction is going to the right, to the left, or equal sila, or nasa balance sila. Okay. So, for a generic equation, A plus B in equilibrium with C and D, the small letters are the coefficients. So, ito yung mga 1, 2, 3, no? and yung capital letters, yung chemical species natin, we can write the K as the concentration of the products multiplied to each other and raised to their coefficients divided by the concentration of the, rea of the reactants multiplied together and raised to their corresponding coefficients. Okay? So this is the way we write the equilibrium constant. Okay? So, ayan. So, ito ulit. So, we have this, the K, that's product over reactant. So, that's concentration times another concentration. Kung tatlo sila, edi times mold sila ulit, no? And then, you raise them by their coefficients. Okay? So, kunwari, 2 ito. Edi squared yun. 
kunwari, 5 ito. E di raised to 5 yun. Okay? Kunwari, ito raised to 1. Uh, ito, 1 half. E di lagay mo dito, 1 half. Okay? So, whatever the coefficient is, the numerical coefficient, that is the exponent of the concentration of the chemical species. Okay. Anong concentration unit ginagamit? We use molarity. Okay. So, we use molarity. Okay. So, for example, we have this chemical species here. Uh, we have this equation, 4 moles of ammonia reacting with 7 moles of oxygen gas, and that is in equilibrium with 4 moles nitrogen dioxide and 6 moles of water in the gaseous phase. No? So let's express them into their concentration. So when expressing the concentration of the chemical species, we use the square bracket. Square bracket, ito yun. Yan. So the square bracket tells us that the concentration of each chemical species ay molarity. Okay? So we have the molarity of this. Ayan yun. Molarity of this. Ayan yun. So since sila ay products, you multiply them sa numerator. Okay? So nasa numerator yung products and you multiply them. Hindi mo sila ipag-add. Multiply dapat. Oh, ito may coefficient na 4. So, you raise this by 4. Kasi sabi natin, whatever the coefficient is, is that will be the exponent. Okay? Here, sa equation natin sa baba. So, ito may coefficient siya na 6. So, that means the exponent will be 6 there. How about the reactants? So, the reactants, we have ammonia and oxygen gas. So, we express the concentration of the two by writing the square bracket. Again, square bracket. Yan, square bracket. So, square bracket ammonia, concentration of ammonia meaning non. Square bracket of oxygen, concentration ng oxygen gas yun. So, again, we have coefficients again. No? Oh, we have 4 here, so magiging exponent yun ng ammonia. So, ito yung coefficient ng ammonia. So, magiging sa, ano yun, magiging exponent neta. Oh, ito, 7 to. So, that means ang exponent neto ay 7 when written in the K expression. Okay? So, kung ano yung coefficients, 4, 7, 4, 6, okay, so yun yung exponent. And the concentration of its species I indicated as square brackets. Again, ito yung square bracket. Okay? So, ganyan. So, some more example here. Okay? Some more example. Dito na natin tatapusin yung session natin. Okay? So, some more example will be this one. So, if we have this molecule here, N2O4, in equilibrium with two moles of nitrogen dioxide, which was shown earlier to you. If you write the K expression for this equation, we write this as the concentration of NO2 raised to 2 divided by the concentration of nit uh, dinitrogen tetroxide. Okay? Raised to 1. Okay? So, yung product nasa numerator yung reactant na sa denominator. May tool siya na coefficient, so raised to 2 yun. 1 lang coefficient niya, so kahit wala kang isulat doon, okay lang. Okay? Uh, let's have this one. Ayan. So, iodine plus chlorine producing 2 moles of iodine chloride. Okay? So, the K expression for this equation will be ICL square, iodine chloride squared, divided by the concentration of iodine and chlorine gas. Okay? So, bakit naka-square yung product? No? Kasi, may coefficient siya na 2. Then, yung reactants, hindi sila naka-raise to a certain exponent kasi, wala naman tayo nilagay na coefficient dito other than the 1. And then, you multiply them. Again, you multiply them, not add them. No? Hindi mo sila pag add You multiply them. Uh, for letter C, we have solid, gas, gas, gas. Okay? So, you write it here. But, um, there was a typo here. Okay? So, hindi, hindi pa nila nakakorek yan. Yung carbon dapat hindi siya isusulat. Okay? So, solids and liquids are not written in K. Uh, take note of this. Solids and liquids are not written in the K expression. Hindi siya sinusulat sa K. 
dapat. So, dapat wala tong carbon solid dito. Okay? So, wala din. Bakit, no? You may ask, bakit, no? Kasi, uh, ang knowledge natin is that ang concentration dito, pag nasa K expression, it changes over time. Then, suddenly, nag stagnant na lang siya, no? Pero kapag yan ay solid or liquid, fix yung concentration yan, eh. Okay? Fix yung concentration nila. The concentration of solid can be deduced from its density. And the concentration of liquids can be deduced from its molarity. For water, ang concentration ng water natin is 55.56 mole per liter. Fix yun, kahit anong mangyari. So, hindi necessary siya ilagay sa K. Kasi ang understanding natin, yung mga concentration dito, they change over time. But for water, the molarity is fixed, no? Hindi talaga nagbabago yung molarity ng tubig. Kaya hindi mo siya ilalagay dito. So, yung solid, ganun din. Yung concentration ng solid can be deduced from its density. And again, the density is an intrinsic property. So, ibig sabihin nun, it doesn't change, no? So, hindi mo rin siya ilalagay dito sa K. Okay, so again, that's a typo. And what that was not corrected. Or you may ask, no, bakit sir yung water dito? Andun. Kasi gas yun. Kapag gas, okay lang. Pag aqueous, okay lang din. AQ, aqueous, okay lang din. Pero kapag liquid and solid, kapag S o kaya L ang nakalagay dito sa face nila, wag mo sila isusulat doon. Okay? So, ayan. So, okay. So, ayan daw. So, I think you will be dealing with more on the species on the gaseous face naman. But again, I have to impart you this, ano, this warning, no, that solids and liquids are not to be written in the K expression because their concentration doesn't change. Okay, so kung nari H two O liquid yan, naka L yan instead of a gas. Wag mo susulat yon don. So what will be my denominator? Pag ganon sir, wag wala ko malalagay yan. Edi one lang. Okay, kahit di mo na isulat yon denominator. Okay. So, we will end at this point muna, okay? Kasi ang mga susunod na lesson natin will be calculation na. So, I want to save the calculation for the next meeting para hindi tayo uh, ma-stress. No? So, chill lang muna tayo. Okay? So, with that, no? maybe okay na tayo. Uh, if you have any questions, so you may raise them. Uh, I will give you some exercises on this part na. No? Bibigyan ko ng exercise in writing the equilibrium constant. Okay? So, ayan. Ah, so, to answer the question kanina, ni Justin Carl, <laughs> yung sa Coke, no? pag nilagyan mo ng Mentos, what happens there daw kasi is that the Mentos provides uh, nucleation sites. No? Okay. Bapapansin nyo kasi, kunwari, may Coke ka, ilagay mo yung daliri mo. Ano mangyayari? Yung daliri mo, mapapalibutan ng carbon dioxide gas. Okay. So, ganun din daw nangyayari sa Mentos. It's, it provides a nucleation site. No? So, nucleation site, ibig sabihin, dun lalaki yung gas particles sa surface ng nilagay mo. Okay. So, yun. Commonly, pwede kahit, uh, actually, kahit, pwede naman kahit ano. Pwede candy, but yung pinaka prominent example ng ano reaction na yon is the mentos no bukod siguro kasi may chemical property yung mentos no na di ba malamig siya siguro may effect yon with the nucleation pro, nucleation process no siguro mas nababilis yung formation ng bubbles kaya mapansin niyo nagbe-burst agad yung coke kapag nilagyan mo ng mentos but technically, you can add any solids naman eh. Kung daliri nga is, saw-saw mo dun, bubula yun slight eh. So, yung Mentos, it just so happened na Mentos is special, no? Actually, I was, ano, I was looking for a paper like that, no? Last time. Kasi pag senior high school tinuturo ko, nagde-demo ako minsan, no? Ayun. 
So, natanong yun ng student ko. Ang nasagot ko lang is the nucleation process, no? So, siguro satisfied sila, pero ako hindi ako satisfied sa answer ko. So, I look on several papers online, mga publication talaga. Mga publications sa Journal of ano, American Chemical Society, no? So, binasa ko yung mga explanation nila. Yun lang naman yung sagot nila din, nucleation process. No? So, ako hindi ako satisfied sa sagot na yun, pero since yun din yung answer ng mga journal, So, siguro tanggapin na lang natin. No? Pero we may ask ourselves, no, bakit kapag ibang solid, di naman ganun? No? Uh, well, the answer there is not yet, ano, not yet clearly defined no, by science. No? Okay. Kaya we wish no, na magkaroon ng paper about that no, sa chemical education. However, sa dami ng important na bagay sa paligid kasi hindi na nila binibigyan masyado ng pansin yung mga ganyan na. So maybe someday no hopefully malay mo ako makapaggawa ng paper about that no. I just don't have the resources for now kasi we are at home so, no. Hindi tayo makagawa ng scientifically acceptable experimental um expend, experimental process kasi nasa bahay tayo. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you know one day ma masatisfy na natin yung answer to why no. Pero for now, tanggapin na lang natin na nucleation yung answer doon. Pero even ako, no, <laughs> hindi ako satisfied sa nucleation lang. There is something in the mentos na, na bakit ganun siya ka-wild. No? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know yet. No? Kasi wala pa namang paper that, uh, that discusses that topic in depth. No? Ganun naman sa scientific community. No? normal lang na sabihin mo hindi mo alam no kasi hindi pa nila na-explore no for example mga HIV ano vaccines no may vaccines na ba there are actually ongoing trials no okay and siguro isa na lang yun sa silver lining ng pandemic natin ngayon no ano yung silver lining although hindi hindi naman ibig sabihin noon is ano ginoglorify natin to no no uh, masama pa rin tong ano event na to but Newer technologies appeared kasi, no, at the start of the pandemic. No? For example, the mRNA vaccines. No? Dati walang ganun. No? However, sabi nga nila, um, yung demand, no, it breeds, ano eh, ano yun, may term dun eh. Pag nabasa mo yung mga libro-libro ni na Karl Marx, no? may sinasabi sila dun eh. Ano yun? Parang yung ano, necessity drives innovation. Parang something like that. Okay. Uh, di ba? Relevant yun ngayon, di ba? Ano kailangan natin? Vaccine. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan may innovations ka no, to make the vaccine production mas, much faster. Usually kasi 10 years and above yung uh, vax, development of vaccine. Pero alam natin ngayon, super bilis. No? In just a matter of few months, may vaccine na agad. No? Okay. So, yun, uh, yun yung siguro isa sa mga good thing no? na na-discover ng humanity in the time of ano, distress ngayon. Kasi with the help of the new technology, the mRNA vaccines, medyo malapit na ma-eradicate yung COVID. Medyo. Okay. Kasi sa Israel, hindi na sila nag-face mask. No? Sana all. Sa Australia, nagpa-party-party na sila even without mask. Diba? Sana all ulit. No? Tayo, nasa bahay pa rin. Ayan. So weird. <laughs> okay. 400 days na tayo nasa bahay. Uh, what else? Uh, yun nga. So with the development of the mRNA vaccine, no? so there are ano, updates on the development of the HIV vaccine na rin. Okay. So yun. Ginagamit nila yung mga spike protein to train the body to fend off uh, uh, future infections. No? So yeah, so it is true that uh, yung ating demand no, it drives innovation. Okay? Pero wag lang sana may explo- mag-exploitation. <laughs> so yun lang kasi pangit sa ating system. Nagkakaroon ng exploitation due to demand. No? So as a result, mababa sweldo, okay? walang benefits. No? So yan. Okay? So hopefully, uh, in the near future, no? so let us make this pandemic an eye-opener 
Okay. So that in the near future, we will vote for better and ano, correct people in the public office, mga matatalino, okay. mga matatalino in a good way, not in a bad way. And may this be a lesson for us, no? To be, ano, to be, ano na lang, to be cautious parate. Okay. So, yan, uh, malapit na yung end ng COVID pandemic. No? So, don't worry. <laughs> uh, ako na, feel ko na malapit na. Okay. So, malapit na. Either, ano, either this year or the following th three years. Okay. Kasi ang Spanish flu, natapos yan, ano eh. Yung first wave, then suddenly may second wave. Mas maraming namatay nun two years after the first wave. No? So, sa case natin ngayon, ayan, so siguro 2021, if we follow the same trend, most likely 2023, ayan, 2023, 2024. Sana, no? Kasi, kasi ang problem lang natin sa Pilipinas, hanggat di tayo nagbabaccinate, walang mangyayari, no? Tignan nyo sa Israel, no? back to normal. Nainggit nga ako sa mga picture nila, no? wala silang face mask. Tapos tayo, kanya-kanya ng face mask selfie sa Twitter, no? <laughs> Gagraduate kayong online. Yun nga eh. Ewan ko ba sa inyo. Kayo na nga naka-experience naka ng, ano, ng, alam nyo yun, kayo na naka-experience ng K-12, Kaya naka-experience ng adjustment sa online learning. So, maya kayo rin yung gagraduate online. Kaso, keep in mind, may board exam kayo, no? Paano kaya yun? No? I, I still don't know the process, no? About that, no? Pero, ano na lang, uh, sana mag-adjust din yung boards, no? Board exam. Kasi medyo iba kasi talaga system ngayon, eh. Okay. Paano kaya practicum next year, sir? Online. <laughs> no, puro online. Uh, kaibigan, mga kaibigan ko na students pa, no? Mas nauna ako sa kanila. <laughs> so, ano, for example, mga engineering friends ko na naunahan ko. 2018 ako graduate then sila. Still ongoing, no? Pero, yan. Ganun kasi talaga pag engineering, medyo, ano, mahirap talaga, no? Okay, so ayun, um, ang kanilang internship, di ba, usually inisip natin pag engineer, mga nasa site yan. No? Ngayon ang internship nila is mga office works na lang, paper, paper, ganun. Pero still so sad, no? Kasi ang makukuha nyo sa internship nyo, sa mga practicum nyo, is yung application ng, ay, ng knowledge nyo sa field. Mm -mm. Ako yung thesis ko na na develop ko yon through the help of my internship sa nuclear facility na no? Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. Okay. So dun talaga ako natuto ng nuclear science, dun ako natuto, dun ako na inspire mag master's degree, mag, then later on PhD no. So yeah. So ewan ko na lang ano mangyayari sa inyo pero ano ha, uh, hopefully Ito na lang siguro yung challenge natin despite na online learning kayo ngayon. No? Try to instill the integrity pa rin. No? Kaya nga may ganun kayo kahapon. Kami rin may ginawa kahapon eh, sa academic integrity day. Kala nyo kayo lang. Okay. So, ayun. Uh, let's try to instill that pa rin. No? Kasi in the end, pag nag-board exam tayo, individual pa rin naman. Hindi tayo makakapag-google nun. And... Apparently, yung suggestions to make the board exam online ay tinuturn down yon ng community. Okay? Even ng industry, ayaw nila na online yung uh, uh, board exam. Kasi madali mag-leak ng exam. Na. Kasi ngayon, sagot nyo sa module nyo daw sa academic integrity event, nasa internet lang din daw, sabi sa FAU community. No? So, ano na lang, um, ano lang, bukod sa kailangan matibay tayo, kailangan ano, honest pa rin tayo sa sarili natin. Okay? So, ano na lang, uh, ang hirap kasi talaga situation natin, no? kaya stay safe na lang muna. Okay? And hopefully, hindi tayo graduate na online. Okay? Kasi senior high nyo nga, hindi nyo experience maka-receive ng toga. Wala naman kayong graduation ng elementary. Uh, element, uh, hindi. Nung elementary, may graduation kayo, di ba? Tapos yung high school, wala na. Kasi nag-online na eh. Okay. So, 
sana pag nag-graduate kayong college, okay na. Okay? So, yun lang. Um, yan, medyo overtime na tayo. <laughs> overtime sa 1 hour 30 minutes. Okay? So, with that, no? So, thank you for attending today. Okay? So, okay lang naman kung onti tayo. Wala sila. <laughs> so, okay lang. Pero, I hope na you share the, ano, the knowledge to our classmates, no? Na even na hindi natin sila kasama, they are still in our minds, no? <laughs> okay? Baka busy lang sila sa ibang mga bagay. Okay? So, yan. Okay. So, thank you for attending, no? And hopefully, I will see you again next meeting, Friday. Um, discuss natin yung calculation part neta. Madali lang yan. Fraction, fraction. Okay? So, yan. So, bye-bye. Stay safe, no? Mag-ingat. And kain na po tayo ng dinner. Okay? Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Salamat po. Ingat, ingat.